As some of you may know, I visited Stowe Mountain Resort in Vermont last year. We were mainly skiing at Smuggler's Notch, but we decided to take a couple days at Stowe. When we went, every lift was open, and I rode every single lift besides Adventure Triple and Toll House, as well as the carpets. But like I said last time, who cares about the carpets? So let's reflect on and rank the lifts at Stowe. Before we really start, I'd like to ask you guys to hit the like button and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 100 subs by the end of the year, and liking and subscribing will really help. Thanks. As always, we're going to take a look at their lists before we rank them. For fixed grips, they have a pretty nice collection. Toll House and Lookout cover the double spot. Adventure and Mountain are from different eras, but they still take care of the triple spot. And Meadows is the only fixed grip quad. For detachables, they have a good but not great collection. They have three high-speed quads in Forerunner, Sensation, and Sunny Spruce. There's the six-person transfer gondola, over easy, and then the gondola, an eight-person gondola. Now, let's start the ranking. Number eight, over easy transfer gondola. 2006 Palmer Omega detachable six-person gondola. Do I really have a choice here? There's no skiable terrain off of this. All it does is connect the bases. Don't get me wrong, that's an important job, and I actually kind of like this lift. I just feel like that doesn't justify putting it above these others at Stowe. Number 7. Meadows Quad. 2014 Dalmar Tristar Fixed Grip Quad. Again, I feel like there's not very much to like about this lift. It serves the beginner area of Stowe on Spruce Peak, so the lift runs very slow even though it has a loading carpet and doesn't have good terrain off of it. I feel bad for the racers who have to lap this lift as well to do the race trail. Stratton has it down with Amex and Ursa serving their race areas. There's two green trails and two blue trails off of it, and I imagine that the blue trails are just the lowest possible requirement to be a blue. Number 6. Mountain Triple. 1985 Doppelmeyer Triple. I only rode this once when Forerunner was down for maintenance, and I thought that it was okay. It's on the slower side, but it actually has some good terrain. Hackett's Highway, Christie Glades, Maiden Lane, and Gulch are some of the standout trails here. You can also access Forerunner if you go right off the top of the lift. I think the new Mountain Six Pack that's coming with the Veil vale Epic Lift upgrade will be a great addition to this area. Another fast, high capacity lift that serves good terrain. Number 5. Sunny Spruce, 2004 Palma Omega Detachable Quad. Sunny Spruce is the beginner detachable at Stowe and allows access to Sensation Quad. This is the slowest detachable at Stowe. When I was there, it was running at 700 FPM. It serves a pod of intermediate trails with two black trails and a green trail. I rode it maybe twice and I didn't like it or hate it. Number 4. Lookout Double. 1979 Riblet Double. I rode this one twice when Forerunner was down, just like the Mountain Triple. It's not a great backup to Forerunner, but it's still good that there is a backup. It serves a lot of the same terrain, and this is some of the best terrain on the mountain. It's a slow ride, but the terrain definitely makes up for this. The lookout pod is good enough on its own, but when you throw in the Forerunner terrain pod, it just makes it that much better. I wish I had taken more laps on this while I was at Stowe. Number 3. Gondola. Just, just the gondola, I think. 1991 Palma Competition 8-Person Detachable Gondola The gondola is usually what people think of when they think of Stowe. It allows you to go anywhere on the mountain, and the top return station has a built-in restaurant, Cliff House, where you can watch the gondola and look down over the whole resort. The gondola was the first lift in the world to reach 1,200 feet per minute, yet I haven't seen any videos of it going that fast. It had the longest line of all the lifts, and especially with the COVID restriction limiting parties that drove there together to go in the gondola together and not allowing other guests in, that line crawled. The terrain that this serves is a massive pot of blues up top and a couple blacks. This lift was certainly a good addition and should keep running for years to come. Number 2. Sensation Quad 2004 Palma Omega Detachable Quad Hey, look at that! Another resort with twin lifts. Again, I think the one that's higher on the mountain is the better one. Sensation is fast, it never had a line when it was there, and it has a great drive sound and the iconic, super loud and good looking Palma Omega terminals. It's all black diamonds on the top of this, and it certainly provides a good challenge. 
The lift line is a really cool one. It's kind of close to the ground at some points before rising back up. It has three depression towers along the line as well. This was a great addition to Spruits Peak. Number one, Forerunner Quad, 2011 Doppelmayr Uni G8 Detachable Quad. I think Forerunner was my most anticipated lift on the trip. I had experienced a Uni G just a month earlier with Westside 6 at Wyndham, and I was excited to get on another. I filmed so much footage because it had a great drive and return terminal sound. The terrain that it serves is some of the best on the mountain, with the famous front four trails, National, Goat, Star, and Lift Line. The only one that I remember skiing was Lift Line, and that was definitely a fun one. It's a pretty crowded lift and usually has a line, but the day I was there, it was going full 1000 FPM and cranking out those chairs, and the line was probably never more than 5 minutes. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please let me know in the comments and like and subscribe. As I said before, I'm trying to get 100 subs before the end of the year. Have you ever been to so? If so, rank the lifts in the comments.